Right, this week we're filming in uh, what is known as Carnoustie country and I'm stood on what is the third fairway of Carnoustie Golf Club. Not playing here this week. I'll take a few snaps around here, a few clips, and then we're gonna get off and play some golf at Pamure is where it all starts. Do you know what's strange? He's only walking up and down holes number two and number three. And it's an obvious statement to make, but you can tell the quality of this place and uh, quite how difficult it is just seeing A, how many bunkers there are. That hole three behind me was littered with bunkers and then there's a burn that runs right across it that I've took, uh, tried to take a few photos of there. And then again, the runoffs into that small green just shows you why these kind of places are open championship venues. So after a brief look at Carnoustie, uh, I get too excited, we're not playing here until tomorrow, but I'm going to have a look at Pamure Golf Club, get an idea what this place looks like, and uh, we tee off 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but like I said, I can't wait that long, I need to go and have a quick nosy. Inside of the clubhouse at Pamure is a real sense of history, so intense, it would almost seem tangible. The full story of Pamure is for another day. Much of the current design follows suggestions by James Braid in 1922, but it was when Ben Hogan graced the fairways in 53 that a new chapter would be written. Right, we've just played the first five holes and I've got uh, David Brody, a general manager at Pamure, we're about to go on the six hole. You started relaying a story about Ben Ogan and the history behind this one hole, but I wondered if you could just repeat that again for us. Yeah, so it was uh, when Hogan came to prepare for playing in the Open Championship at Carnoustie in 1953. He spent two weeks at the club, um, and after leaving, he he'd commented to the, the club committee that his favourite hole was the sixth. And that, that two weeks, sorry, was that, that was his practice, wasn't it? Ready for, he'd never played on he'd any never links all before. never played courses at all. He'd never been in the UK, from my understanding. He'd never been here before. So essentially he came, we obviously used a different size ball. So yes. he had to become accustomed with that. And obviously the way that he played with the long... Uh, divot. The long divot. He needed to obviously work away from that. So he spent two weeks just drilling him and, him and his caddy and just played the holes, um, used some of the holes as driving ranges, uh, or they, they used the 17th as a, as a range facility. Right. Uh, so just to, to get become accustomed. Um, and he went on, and then he went on after two weeks to win the Open. Yeah, so obviously it was all down to Pam Muir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing yeah, to do yeah. with Hogan's <laughs> yeah. amazing talent. Um, yeah, so obviously. But it played it its just, part anyway. Yeah, completely. And it's, it's, it's a lovely part of our history. Um, that essentially only ever played here, the Burnside and the Meadow course at Carnoustie was the only times that he played. So essentially yeah, yeah. played here more yeah, yeah. Than, than any other course um, in the UK, which is which is lovely. And um, there's some lovely anecdotal stories about his, his time here as well. And then at, at the, the time he said the one thing that the sixth hole is missing is a greenside bunker. Yeah. So the committee put installed the greenside bunker still known now as Hogan's bunker oh, right. and then the hole was changed the name was changed to Hogan after his time here so oh, fantastic yeah uh, it's a little bit of a test so well it's going to be a test today because right into the wind on this one as well it today because it's uh, it's a tough hole as yeah. it is so if I can get anywhere near Hogan's bunker in two we'll uh, we'll take that any day of the week uh, absolutely a part today is going to feel like a birdie David went on to explain that a birdie on Hogan's hole would see golfers Rewarded with a special memento, and even with a two to three club headwind, the challenge was on. A reasonable drive narrowly avoiding the fairway bunker left me 176 yards directly over that infamous bunker. It would require my Sunday best. And for once, I duly obliged. It looks to me like it was. Well, that's without doubt the best shot I have hit, well, probably in a long time, but certainly uh, since I've turned up at Pam Muir today. 
Right, I'm actually taking my time over this one. It means a lot to, uh, if I could hold this, I, I mean that, it really does. There's a challenge going on in my head and I desperately want to hold this. Oh! <laughs> oh! Well, I say I'm disappointed missing the putt, but I'd have took a foot all day long in what is. That's an incredible golf hole. And uh, to be named after Ben Hogan. The burning would have been nice, but like I said, great golf hole and uh, that's a damn good par into today's breeze. Right, a gorgeous morning. I'm at Arbroath Golf Club. It's just uh, a little bit up the road from where I'm staying in Carnoustie. And uh, I've asked to switch the camera on. I'm just playing the first. We're in for what will be a par putt. But the green complex on the first hole, if this is anything to go by, it looks absolutely stunning. First cut and the feed in, in terms of these um, little tiny swales and cambers, and then into a green which looks to be absolutely fantastic. There's no excuses when you miss these. I might as well keep it rolling, see if we can make a par on the first. Not quite, but a great start. And another course, which I've no idea what to expect, but we'll soon find out. Early holes see the introduction of double pins, revetted bunkers, rolling fairways, immaculate aprons, and railway lines. Our growth is ticking a lot of boxes right now. Steve, I believe, yeah, you're, you're a volunteer and you help out in terms of the running yeah, of the club yeah. and cutting it one of the volunteers yeah yeah so how many hours of your time do you have to give up to look after a course like this uh a lot I, I, no not a lot <laughs> no. I, I, today it'll be about eight or nine hours really uh and then maybe two or three another right. day yeah oh. it, it, if required wow well the, the reason i just wanted to stop you just say thanks on behalf of the visitors uh, all visitors that come to our growth golf club because uh right. you're doing a great job and well, keep up the good work i know bill as well yeah, does uh, does yeah, a bit bill, and, uh, bill does as well yeah, yeah. But i i hope that they enjoy it i yeah. think it's a very good course yeah a very fair course for visitors and you oh, yeah. know I, I just hope that people see this and come and try it. A great little par three again, back into what looks like to be a bit of a basin green. I can only see half the flag. Back into the breeze as well. well that's not a very good shot, but will it work? No, straight into front. I can't come to Arbroath and not try Arbroath Smokies, which I believe is smoked haddock. So uh, it's over to the harbour and uh, we'll taste a bit of fish instead of whiskey this week. How are you doing, you okay there? I just, I are both smokies, I want to try them, how do I order them, and what do they sort of come in, how do we... Yeah, 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 okay, let's try that, perfect. The moment of truth. I know I've got no bones left in that. Do you know what? In all honesty, I was dreading tasting it from the looks of it, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And what it isn't, it's not overly smoky, which is what I was expecting it to be and why I might not have liked it. But it's not like that at all. Now this isn't a food channel and obviously you don't want my opinion on 
a description of how this fish is but trust me it is very nice indeed it's really moist fish you're laughing behind the camera because you know i was dreading and away tasting it's absolutely gorgeous and i'll let you taste some now not smoky one bit our boat has got damn good golf course and our both our both smokies a nice bit of fish as well see you in episode two i think we've just got a bone So my travels through Carnoustie country continue, and this time they take me to Forfa, and I lay out what can be attributed to old Tom Morris and James Braid. Right, it's challenge time. It's man versus golf hole challenge. It's the 12th hole, 420 yards, and yet it's stroke one. So I picked a right one to uh, throw down the gauntlet with, but we are down breeze a bit. I think it's very much about this tee shot. If I can get one chasing down the middle, I'm driving the ball well so far. Oh, that's a good ball. Is that a bunker waiting for it? Maybe that's, that's got to be a long way away, surely. I can't quite get that one coming down, but we're down the left-hand side, and uh, it's a decent enough start. And we'll see what awaits. Right, so just got yardage. Uh, one four one in. Uh, I'm going to take a wedge. It's quite a bit down breeze. Um, decent enough drive, and like I said, but only a couple of yards to the left, and you're into the uh, you're into the heather. So you can see why it's stroke one. It's fairly tight. Right. Bang on line, it's just about that distance now. Come on, get up. I need to see that ball. No, yes. Yeah, not bad. It's just obviously, I don't know, you might have seen it, might have just fed off slightly off down the right hand side. Uh, it's a birdie chance, but it's a, it's a long birdie chance. But I can't get the short one, so you never know. I might hold this one. Right, well, do you know what? I think that's probably done better than I thought it did from back there. I knew it was going to bound on a bit. But uh, it's a chance, it's a chance, but can we, or can I rather, get a ball rolling at the hole and give it half a chance? Come on, stroke one, first birdie. No, no, yet again, a uh, week in terms of uh, the pace and uh, it was never going to get there once it was falling away up that hill so it's uh, it's a par uh, they took that on the tee any day of the week but uh yeah that birdie is still eluding me i keep picking up on the par threes but uh oh very nice Right, another chance at the elusive birdie. And the irony would be if I all this, I've literally duffed a nine iron that's fed itself right down to here. Worst iron shot of the day. And, uh, oh my word, it is as well. I'd, oh, it stayed out. Oh, I don't like these COVID flags. Wow, that was bang in the middle. In a way, I'm glad it didn't go in after that nine iron. But I can't believe it didn't. Yeah, another pair. I can't believe that. Yeah. Finally, that elusive birdie. I don't even know what hole we're on. Is it 16? 
Ah, oh, my word. <laughs>